Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Are you thirsty, huh? I'm sorry I'm poking you in the nose, huh? Huh? You're done? You're done? Once more? Huh? It's really quite amazing when you're working with a snake that kills and maims a huge portion of the local population in Pakistan where these are found, also East Africa. This is uh, Eka Sosharukiai, and these are F2 generations that have known me since birth, will still bite the snot out of me if I, you know, give them a chance. I defy anybody, any of the free handlers to come and free handle Echis. Uh, they're just not known for that, but, uh, you know, the animals, you know, know me. Uh, these are two-year-old guys this summer. Uh, we, we don't leave water dishes in their cage, but we do spritz it down periodically and uh, give them a drink when they ask, huh? You want some more? Huh? I'm sorry. Yes, I know. Water can be offensive to these guys, and they can easily get butt hurt. Well, I'm going to offer these guys some chicks uh, a little later. It's just at the end of breeding season. Uh, they're, uh, These are live feeders, uh, despite my best effort. Would you like a drink too? See now, that's a little tough for me to get my fingers down in there uh, safely, so we'll just spritz the wall and let them uh, get a drink if they so desire. You can't really get any closer because her cage is open. And I don't want her to reach out and touch me. Yes, well, I don't really want her to reach out and touch me, but if she wants to come out for enrichment, uh, that's my invitation, leaving the door open. Uh, you know, it's perfectly okay to do uh, when everybody knows that they need to <laughs> keep, uh, keep away from there. Hi, would you like some water, huh? you like some more? I know that uh, it's not so nice when it hits the top of your head, but, um, you know, I just make the offer, and then I do something inoffensive like spray the walls down. At least once, uh, once or so a week, uh, these desert species uh, get, uh, get some water. These are the butt hurt babies. These will be a year old, I think, uh, this summer. Now these were absolutely eager feeders across the way. When I moved them to the bigger bins, it's like, we're not letting you feed us. You offended us by moving us over here. Okay. Sooner or later, they're going to get hungry enough to start eating again. Uh, I am certainly not going to force feed them at this age because, you know, they were eating uh, really well across the way. This is the only one that's eating, and it lives in its hut. You put some food near the opening, and the, uh, the dragon comes out and grabs it and drags it back into the lair. Oh, we saw a little snoot, so uh, they're all happy. Hi. I know. You're smiling at me. Gave her a drink of water. Uh, I think she's looking for food. Um, but I'm not... Uh, I don't have any food uh, with me right at this moment. And she doesn't look like she's uh, so inclined to uh, 
uh, to come out. So I'll move to the other side of the room and close her door. Hi, yes I know. Oh, I know, I know. We're so big and scary over here. Dana sent me this beautiful, which I've actually used uh, for handling snakes, a uh, beautiful uh, new set of tongues they developed. Uh, uh, but, you know, I only use it on snakes that are out of control. And <laughs> other than that, it makes a beautiful device for moving water dishes around. <laughs> uh, thanks again, Dana, for that. Just a little... Uh, Southwestern speckled rattlesnake. This guy is usually a pretty good drinker uh, from the squeeze bottle, but he's back there uh, against the hot side because uh, he ate yesterday and he really needs to keep his heat up to, to keep the food digesting. So now I will carefully maneuver around and avoid that dragon down there. <laughs> uh, you would not want that hanging off your leg or any other body part. Want another drink? Huh? Want another drink? No? Oh, that's a def definite no thanks. Yeah, that's a no thanks. So I'm gonna shut her cage door, and before I do that, I will I'll really offend her by overfilling her water dish to freshen it, and let that water trickle under her tuchus. You know, a rainforest snake, as usual here at the lair, they don't like water. So shut that. Maybe your chance to come out. You know, she's really big and heavy, and, you know, I really try not to put, you know, a hook on her because uh, it's easy to break her ribs or uh, sever her spine. It's, I've unfortunately, no, it happens. Uh, uh, it's happened at zoos, it's happened at private labs, uh, in collections. Uh, when they get this big and heavy, uh, you try not to manipulate them. That's why she's on the very lowest uh, cage here. Not that we really want to ignore her. It's just uh, for her own safety and ease of handling, she inhabits the bottom of the uh, stack here. Okay, so right now I am trying to locate Reaper. Um, I believe he's in his trap box because he's blue. Um, but he has been known to hang out in many places. So I just want to confirm where he is, uh, because if he's in his trap box, I could, uh, uh, shut it and service his cage and, uh, do some things. I mainly want to go in right now is to reposition the spray nozzle. So... What we're going to do is uh, we're going to make sure that he's in the trap box and that way I can safely, yep, he's in there. I don't know if you can see him. I certainly can. I can see his lips parting because he's very happy to see me. So now that I know where he is, um, I see pieces of substrate in the track. This is the problem with trap boxes is that wood shavings get into the track and cause problems. But I think that's secure enough uh, to do what I want to do. Now, 
I've already overfilled his water dish. I don't see a lot of poop, uh, although uh, I do see a couple of pieces that I will take and toss out. Okay, so the main purpose, and there is always a purpose, and you should never go into one of these venomous snake cages without a good reason, uh, is I want to redirect the spray nozzle for our misting system so it, uh, it sticks out and sprays sort of in the middle of the cage. Now, what I use is this place in pluck foam uh, and I stick it in the corner so it uh, pushes the nozzle in the direction desired. And that's a little small so we'll use a block that's a little larger. That's the nice, nice thing about this foam is it's divided into little squares and you can size it uh, uh, exactly the way you want it. Okay, so that's perfect. So it's going to spray out here, not along here. And uh, that should uh, get a better distribution of water from the, uh, the morning spray that happens. It's not such a a bad problem right now because it's springtime. Uh, it says 60% humidity in the room. It's not like in the winter when it's 30. But if he's in shed, I certainly want him to shed complete without any issues. So now I will release the Kraken. This will probably require two hooks. One to stabilize the box, the other one to pull. shooting out. Oh, uh, well, that's always a possibility with the, uh, <laughs> with the reaper. I see a snoot. I see a tongue. I see a tongue, yep. Yeah. Now, he's so volatile that we keep these towels up on top of the cage, so if he's in a really cranky mood and striking the cage, we'll pull these down just so he doesn't see us. Uh, and goes slamming against the glass. Uh, he is uh, he is like nitroglycerin. <laughs> the slightest little provocation, and he just goes ballistic. So I'm thinking we probably don't need to keep this here, but <laughs> I would rather keep it there until he grows a little bit more, just to be sure that that little. Uh, pointy snout and the rest of them can't uh, escape it into the room. That's a snake that you really don't want out in your room when you don't expect them to be out in your <laughs> room. Hey Slink, you want something to eat? Take the long way, huh? Come on. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Did I get the uh, stick wet? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry, Mr. Viper Keeper. Don't mess with me. Take that because I can visit Slink. So Slinky is my male Jameson's mamba. I've had him for ages. He's a, a relatively uh, easygoing mamba. Uh, mambas are generally not easygoing. Uh, and it varies from individual to individual. I've had him a long time, so there's a fair amount of trust uh, between the two of us. Uh, although he still uh, slow tongue flicks at me, uh, 
and acts very nervous, but generally he's okay. Aren't you, bud, huh? Jameson Mambas are from Equatorial Africa, the wetter areas. They're um, semi arboreal like all the Mambas, some more than others. These guys will also be found on the ground. So we'll just let uh, Slinky uh, finish off his rat probably want more but I've got some others to feed maybe a chick tomorrow I'm gonna do the uh, around the glass trick for this guy this is another Bothrops Asper hello are you interested in this hmm? normally he's very quick um, it's not really terribly hot he may have been snoozing. Hogo, you want this? I need to open this. Oh! Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, Pogo, you can eat that. I'm going to uh, uh, let you do that. Hopefully Pogo's uh, gravid. Only time will tell. We have one of our Little rough death adders in shed. He also uh, pooped in his uh, environment here. So I'm going to move the little ungainly sausage that likes to bite into the container. Now death adders don't always hook so well, so and I'm not really enthusiastic about putting my hands near the container because I got nipped one time putting one in the container. Fortunately, it was a dry bite. It uh, leapt up on the edge of the tub just as the lid was going down and reached up and nipped me with one fang on the wrist and it cost me a night in ICU until we determined that it was a dry bite and then they let me go home. Uh, so I'm very careful with death adders in tubs as well as other venomous snakes because, uh, you know, I guess you can sum it up to shit happens. But you can mitigate a lot of those, uh, those incidents by uh, knowingly not put your hands in harm's way. So now we're just going to clean up its enclosure. That's in relatively good shape. In the meantime, what is your issue? She is definitely in an agitated mood today. Um, I am going to clean her cage, so it's a good thing she's already pissed off because when she comes out of the red tub, she'll be even more pissed off, but at least then she has a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these guys normally rarely move unless food is present. And she has just been all over her container and just huffing and puffing and in general in a very foul mood. Well, as I said, we sh I shut the air conditioner down because it was actually a little chilly in here. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that uh, it didn't get any chillier and actually let it warm up a bit. Um, and actually it reduces the noise level uh, in the room, which uh, I'm going to replace that air conditioner uh, this spring because that is a very noisy one. 
It's been noisy ever since uh, it was repaired by the service people. So, all right, well, let's see if this angry little beastie uh, will go back uh, peacefully. Knowing that they can strike straight up. I think this is the female. This is the last litter that my friend Dr. Bob Henderson uh, produced. Uh, prior to him passing away. Uh, so I have hopes to continue his bloodline. I have not yet had any success in breeding rough death adders. Uh, so I have hopes that I can continue that. 